Hey guys and welcome to Nicorette and today we're going to go over how to make this Daisy Granny Square blanket. It is really cute. This is just going to be a simple little baby blanket that I'm making for a family member. Uh, it's only half done. But I wanted to show you how to actually do the pattern itself. I think it's gorgeous. It's a really nice version of the granny square because it gives you something different to look at in the center. Here I'm doing a rainbow version of it if you can't tell. There's like green and doing them all in diagonals. So I've got like all the different colors of the rainbow and I'm also doing kind of an ombre effect too so I'm doing lighter and then I go into darker with each of the colors. You can tell over there with my reds I've got like this almost salmon color being my red. It can look a little weird at times but it's gonna look really pretty when it's all said and done and I'm gonna hopefully get some pictures of that up on the channel as well. So, all right, let's get started. For this project, you will need whatever colors you wanna use for your daisy blanket. So if you wanna use all the same colors, you could. It definitely won't highlight the pattern that well. So what I did is I ended up getting yellow for my center as the center of the daisy. And then I'm using white yarn. This is all worsted weight. And I got a light pink and a dark pink. Some people just use straight up one color and then make a little edge that it all goes along with. That's all fine and dandy. I also have a cream yarn that I'm using as my edging to put everything together. You'll need some worsted weight cream if that's how you want to follow it. Um, I just don't have it on me right this second. Oh, it's right over here. Oh, found it. So you're also going to need some cream, Vanna's Choice. All worsted weight, all of this is Vanna's Choice except for the white that I have right here. This is actually Hobby Lobby's I Love This Yarn. It's just what I had on hand, so that's what I'm using for this. It's really nice. It's really soft. And it actually meshes pretty well with the pattern itself. I find that it makes the daisy less prominent, so if you want to definitely make it like a, hey, this daisy is popping off, then you should definitely use another Vanna's Choice or something even thicker. Sorry, my cat is in the background. All right. Oh, and also, we're using a size J crochet hook, like I always do. And this is a Susan Bates. I love these. They're so comfy, and I really like the hook on them. They have quite the hook. All right, let's get started. So to start this out, you're going to want to make a slip knot. I do that by crissing mine over and grabbing my tail. Makes a nice, simple slip knot. You don't need a tail that's too long, but definitely leave a long enough tail that you can actually sew in your start. Here, you're gonna wanna pull it onto your ring here. I chain two to make myself a magical ring. So the magical ring is right there. That's where my slip knot is, essentially. And what we're gonna wanna do next, I can't get this to focus. And what we're gonna wanna do next, there we go, I got it to focus is we're going to want to double crochet 12 inside of this right here. So you didn't go into your first one, you skipped your, your second chain right there that you made, and you go right back into your first. And you notice that I crochet a little bit differently. Oh no, I lost my stitches. I crochet a little bit differently than what I've noticed, and I don't know why I do this, but I've been, I, I don't think it looks that much different, where I actually wrap from the left instead of from the right. I notice a lot of people go like that and pull. I don't do that. I do this and I pull. I don't see that much of a difference, so it's not something that I'm probably going to change. But if you think that that's why my stitches look a little bit weird, that could be why. So now I'm on my third right here. Wish my cat would stop jingling in the background. I might have to take off her collar. One, two, three, four. You can tell by how many V's you have from the start here. So. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not making that a double half. Six. Yeah, that's the difference between a double crochet and a double half is that what I just did there was a double half. But I have to pull it back in and do a double crochet because I don't want double halves. They basically are a double crochet but half the height because you're not pulling it through once and then twice. Instead, you'd be pulling through all three of them. How many do I have now? I always lose track. I'm gonna pull that a little bit tighter to give me a bit less to play around with. So one, two, three, four, 
to five, six, seven, eight, nine. Hey, I've got three more. I keep doing it because it's how I'm angled right now. 11. And 12. So what I do here is I wind up slip stitching into here. And I'm going to cut my tail. I could find scissors, but I don't. So I'm just going to end up ripping it. Which is why I have calluses on my fingers because it's what I end up doing most of the time. I'm then going to grab my white yarn. So white yarn right there. And because I slip stitched here, let me get that focused in here. Okay, so my battery died and I also went and took off all my cat's collars so they should not be jingling. Hopefully they will not be disruptive. So I am now, where were we? We put, last put our, right here, we took our last 12 double crochet right here and put it back into the first stitch of our first double crochet for our round. Now, I'm going to use my white yarn instead of just my yellow yarn. I do this because it makes it so that it's seamless. So I'm gonna reach through here. Instead of just using my yellow yarn and just doing a quick little slip stitch, I try to use my white yarn because it makes it look like it's seamless. Look at that. And I will chain one and two. I like to pull both the yellow and the white yarn really tight because it makes it look like a perfect circle there. Then I like to tuck my tails in while I'm doing it. But basically the goal here with our daisy chain is we're going to put a bunch of puffs in each 12 of these double crochets. So a puff is basically you four double crochet and then you take your needle, put it back into the first double crochet and then loop it through. So I'm gonna, that's how you describe to do it, but it's totally different when you look at it. So I'm gonna keep my yarn and work with it as I go and keep it inside because it makes it easier to hide my tail. So I double crochet two, but I never, I always see in patterns that you should count that as your first double crochet. I'm sorry, but that's not a double crochet. I, I never count that as my first double crochet. So I'm gonna go back into my stitch right here, show you how I did that. I go with my double crochet lined up right there. I'm gonna go right in, keep my two tails above it so it's working like it's part of the stitch. And then I just do a simple double crochet. I go back into that same exact stitch. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit more let out for the yarn. And again, I'm sorry if I sound scratchy and weird. I've been sick. Um, then, another reason why there's not any videos posted lately, I do another double crochet inside that same stitch. I go back in. I kind of pull to make it so that I can tell where it is. See that little hole right there? I'm going to keep going into it. Three, wrap again, double crochet, a little enough crooked here, and then four. So now what I do is I like to make a little bit of a bigger loop so that I don't lose any of my stitches. I go back, and right here is my first double crochet. I put my hook right into that. Then I take my loop from over here, wrap it, and then I slip stitch it through. That creates a nice big poof, which turns into the daisy poof. And when you make 12 of them, it looks really cute. So now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to chain two, and in the next repetition, it's gonna say, uh, put whatever in chain two space, space, basically you're putting it in here, and I'm going to double crochet into my next stitch while keeping my tail. I try to go at least to the halfway point with my tails just kind of there pretending that it's part of the stitch part, like pretending that there's just like a little extra buff here. And then I go into my next stitch and I repeat. And I keep doing, oh no, I lost my stitch. It's very easy to lose stitches when you're doing this, especially when you're in front of a camera and you can't really see what you're doing for the most part. And then you do one, two, and the same second stitch. 
and I keep pulling. See how I keep tugging and it keeps bringing it over? Three, and then four. So I've got that in there. And notice that my tails kind of got a little wonky, so I'm going to tug on those and make it so that they're not. And I like to tug on them and keep them nice and taut so that it's not like it's, it's, it's actually hidden instead of it just being this big clumpy mess. So I will regularly pull on my tails to make sure that they're there. So what I like to do is pull this forward. Here you can see, you can count backwards. One, two, three, four. So that's your first stitch. Wrap again, pull taut, so tightly, and then slip stitch and chain two. I want to do that the entire way around. So I'm going to do that one more time and then I'm going to go until the end and I'll show you how to finish up. So wrap, go in, double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, and double crochet. So this is me doing it really quickly now. Pull out, one, two, three, four. Go back and do your first stitch right here. Wrap, pull, pull through, slip stitch basically, and then you chain two. So now you just keep doing that all the way around. And eventually, you're going to cut your tails when you get to like here, I cut my tails, and let them just hide seamlessly in there. And I actually don't really cut off until, like I just stop using it and then I'll cut them off at the end and call it good. And then I sew in this tail here all around the 12 stitches, but I'll show you how I do that. But for right now, we're gonna keep doing those puff stitches, so four double crochet, and then you slip stitch through the first and the last stitch to make them into one giant puff. All the way until you have 12 of them, and then I'll show you how we do our next uh, row, turning it into a granny square, which is actually pretty easy if you know how to do the basic granny square, which I also have a tutorial for. So. I'll see you when this is done and I'll show you how to finish off on the end. Be right back. Okay, so now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right here is my last stitch. So I go in, I do my one double crochet, I go back into the same stitch, two, I do three, I oh don't know, and I lose it. When I do it in front of the camera, I lose them a lot more than I usually do because I've got this camera in front of me and I'm sometimes looking through the viewfinder and sometimes I'm looking straight at it. But I try really hard to look through the viewfinder because I don't want my video to be blurry, which is commonly an issue. See, I was just looking through, not looking through the viewfinder and that's when it got blurry, like that, see? So if I don't know where to put my hands for a moment, it just gets blurry and it's weird. So now, loosen it up a little bit, go back into the first. Wrap, pull, go through. You still chain two, but now I try to get in as soon as I can. So I honestly go from the side here and then I'll slip stitch into it and I'll make it as tight as possible. If you're noticing that your, your hole here is a lot bigger than in other places, you can undo it and undo one of your chains. One of my chains automatically undid right there. So I've only got one chain instead of chaining two. And then I go in, slip stitch, slip stitch and then I start working on my next part and I forgot that I actually undo my slip stitches keep my chain because what I like to do is I like to slip stitch with my other color which makes it more consistent so next I'm going to be making my granny square with this yarn I need to get it out first and foremost take off my little fabric there I think I've got a Knitting needle in here somewhere. No, no, it's just oddly stiff. All right, so now I'm going to, I got scissors this time. I'm going to cut a nice, decent tail. That's for sewing. Also, if you look at the back of this, you can tell where I actually stopped doing this. It's pulled tight. So actually right now I can just get as close as I can. These are really dull scissors. Oh, my scissors are super old. And or from the Dollar Tree, so they're dull. I need to get some decent ones from Joann's. So here, I've slip stitched into my little spot right there. I'm gonna take my yarn. I've got a lot of white yarns now everywhere. Hold on one second. As I like hit everything as I can. Woo! So, 
I take this and I hold it to the back. I take my, my pink worsted weight. I wrap, slip, slip, chain. And that's gonna look really wobbly until you tug your pink and your white. Now, it looks normal again. And I like to work my tails in again while I'm working. So here, I'm going to double crochet. I'm gonna chain two, and then I'm going to go into the first part right here. So this is right that little hole between your 12th and your first. You double crochet. We're working on our granny square part right now. So we're working on making our foundational stitch right here. Foundational roll, row. I can talk. And then I double crochet one. And with granny squares, it's the only time I ever treat a double crochet, uh, a chain two as a double crochet. Cause that's just how I learned them. And I just can't unlearn it that way. And then, uh, I go two, and for this one, just because I don't like it, I'm not going to treat it as a double crochet, so here, I take back what I just said, and I do double crochet three. Keeping this here, you then go into your next chain two space. So here, you're going to want to put a three double crochet cluster. So you put one, two, three, and that's what I call a cluster. It's different than a puff, because you're just double crocheting one. and three, and then you chain one. Did the same here, so you did your double, cro you double crochet three, and then you can see where I chained right there. Did I not chain? I did not chain, I have to undo that. Oops, I need to chain. Otherwise, what will I double crochet cluster into? That's my little space to double crochet cluster into. So I'll repeat that, so I, double crochet three after doing my chaining two, and then I chain one, and I go back into my second one. So this is between one and two cluster. I go into that chain two space, and I double crochet three. One, two, and you notice that my tails are kind of getting all weird, but that will be fixed. Three, and then chain. It's because I was talking. I got distracted with the chain. So I pull those, they're nice and tight, I then go into the space right here, your chain two between your third and your fourth, right? No, one, two. Between your second and your third, and you double crochet three into there. So the goal here is to make it so that you've got two clusters between all your edges, all your corners here. Two and three. Now, because this is a circle and we're trying to turn it into a square, it's gonna be really wonky the first round. You gotta do this a couple times. So, I'm still keeping my tail involved and now I'm going between my third and my fourth. So this is one, two, three, four, and I'm going into that chain two space. And here is where it gets a little bit different. Here is how we're gonna turn our edge. So here, you see where we already did the So here you can tell where we did our first part, then it goes into the double crochet cluster, double crochet cluster, and here is where we turn an edge. So we're going to double crochet three, so well, I'm keeping my tail in there as I do it. One, two, and three, and then you chain one. You chain the one, kind of pull things, pull your tails, make it look all pretty. Then in the same space, after you've chained, you're gonna do another cluster. So one, two, and three. And then, you do another chain one. And you're gonna keep doing this same repetition where you do two clusters and you turn a corner. I'm gonna take this, cause that's where I'm actually gonna cut it because that's a pretty good amount of space to crochet that into. I'm gonna take that and cut it and you chain your one. And you go into your next space. Cluster, cluster, edge. 
cluster, cluster, edge, cluster, cluster, and then at the end here, you just finish off your edge, basically, because they're all just three double crochet clusters. So you just end up putting three double crochets inside there, and then you slip stitch back. It's pretty simple, it's pretty easy. If you've got the general concept of a granny square down, it's pretty easy. So let's keep that tail out of the way now, because I don't feel like dealing with it anymore and crocheting it anymore in one, two, three, this is me going quicker. So chain, then go back into one, two, three, do a chain, and now you're back at a corner. So you've done your two, and now you're in this corner over here. So you do one, two, three, chain, and then you go back into the same one. So you've already did your cluster, but you're doing it again. Two. And then three. Chain. So then you do, again, your two clusters for your edge, your side. Not your edge. Two. Three. I'm going to do this all the way around. Usually I try to not make you see the same thing over and over again because I feel like if I've shown it once it's repetitive to try to show it a couple more times. You know what I mean? There we go. But this one is an exception because granny squares can be tricky if you don't see the pattern in it. Most people do, but some people don't and that's okay. You gotta see it a couple times. I had an issue the first time I ever did a granny square. I was like, how does this make sense? But basically, the ess essence of a granny square is that for every one of these chain one spaces that you make, when you go into the next round, you're putting a three double crochet cluster inside of that. That's your hole that you're putting it into. So now, I've already done that. I've got to chain my one. And this is going to be an edge. Again. So I've already done, this is how we started with our three double crochet cluster. One, two, because this is part of an edge. That's why this is weird. This is, go this is going to be the first part of your corner. And then one, two, corner, one, two, corner, one, two, corner. You see the pattern, you can't unsee it. So it's like right in a bike. You never forget your first granny square. Two. Three, chain, turn the corner, but stay inside your hole there. So one, two, three. Now, this is where it gets kind of weird. One, you want to go into making two double crochet clusters in these one, these spaces right here. One, keep getting blurred out. Two, there we go, that's better. Three, chain. This one's one, because right here, this is our first one again, but right here, we're still going on our corner here. Where we go, one, two, three, chain. Three, chain. So now, what we're gonna do is we started off with a three cluster right here, and this is secretly a corner. Not really so secretly, but I like to think it is. All right, pull off that center a little bit better. So here, we're going to go one inside our same first one, peep back, two, if I could actually, you know, get the stitch going, two, three. So now that I've got three in there, I like to chain the one, and then I'll slip stitch back into the first double crochet of that corner. And because I'm not changing colors, I'm not going to do what I usually do with my color change. But notice that because I chained one, it's a lot smoother in these edges here. They all look equidistant, because it can get weird sometimes. So you can see that it's starting to turn into a square here because of the edging and when you do your next round it's a lot better 
So when you do your next round, I think the second round is way easier than this, than what we just did. Chain one, chain two, you go back into that hole right here. See, this is a hole between the three from your first and three from your last. That's where the hole is. One, two, three. Then you chain one. After clusters, you always chain. So now each one of these chain one spaces is going to be a spot where you place your double crochet three clusters. You just made, laid the groundwork for your next part. So here is where you wrap and do your three cluster. One, two, and that's how granny squares get bigger and bigger because if you notice, the first one only had two double crochet clusters, but now one, two, three. You keep making more and more every time. Didn't grab from the center of my skein, so now I have to like roll it all over the table, which is fun. So, oh, forgot to chain. Two, three, chain, one, try to work with half of it at the same time. Two and three. And now, chain one, we're back at our corner. We're doing the exact same thing that we did there, where we did our double crochet three cluster. Sometimes people chain two at their corners. I just don't like how those look. Sometimes it can make more of a clear corner too, but I just, I don't know, I just, I don't prefer it. It depends on what I'm doing, and honestly with these, I tried it and I don't like how my crochet style looks with it. So I'm going inside the center of my corner. Two, three, chain, turn, go in again with another three cluster. And I'm basically just gonna keep doing what I've been doing this entire time until I get to the end. And then I, with this specific pattern like to grab my darker pink for the round after this and then I do another round with cream doing the same exact thing the entire time around where I'm just going into the previous holes of the previous granny square so I'll show you what the end product looks like once I'm done all right so that's basically how you make a granny square it's pretty easy for the daisy part. The hardest part is figuring out how to do these little puffs and then turning it into the actual square itself. All right, I'll see you when I get this done. So now that you've gone around the entire time, you'll notice that you end up with the three from the light pink round, and then you end up with four, three double crochet clusters, and then you end up with five, three double crochet clusters and it goes all the way around, you're just changing the color. And I always like to slip stitch and then pull through with the next color when I'm changing my color. So here, I'm finishing off, I need to do a quick little slip stitch because that's what I do for all my corners. I slip into the very first from my, my this round earlier here, and I slip through, slip through, I do another slip stitch when I'm finishing off, and I'm going to cut off an obscenely long tail. Mostly just because I hate not having enough of sewing material when I'm putting all of my squares together. It drives me insane. So now I pull that through, the slip stitch, tug it, and it's all done. So, on the back, you're all done doing all the crochet parts. Here you're gonna use a darning needle. It's just a basic little turning needle and to sew in all of your tails. All of these tails I worked in while I was crocheting, so these can all just be cut. So I'm just gonna cut all of these off. But here, I don't like to just cut that because it needs to be worked in, this tail, which I didn't work in the tail in earlier. Here, I go through the back way, so here's where it started, and I go through the 12th double crochet there, and I go through and I go through, sorry I wanted to focus in on that, uh, 
and I go through and I pull. And then I do this quite a few times. So there I went through the first six stitches and now, well actually seven, it's whatever I can get my needle through honestly, my darning needle through. And I go through that, I pull it tight. That way there's no hole in the center and it looks like a little, little daisy bud, like the center of a daisy. I usually can only get through a couple at a time, especially when I'm like trying to focus on what I'm doing through the screen. And I go through as many times as I feel comfortable. So I typically go around at least two or three times. So this is my third time going around now. Go through here, and when you get tighter, you're gonna notice that you can only go through so many at a time. You can't just make it like this huge thing where you go put your needle through every single stitch. But you can get them through a lot of them. So like, I'll put it right through the centers of all those, and I'll pull it. And I'll pull this. And then I like to go past where I started and pretend like I'm going into a fourth round. But that's just because I don't like, there's always like this little tiny mini gap here. It's not huge, but it's one that I notice and I just shove it par past that. So now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna take the tip here and I'm gonna try to cut it as close as I can. And that's pretty much it. That's all there is to making the Daisy Granny Square blanket. And then you st stitch them all together however you stitch your granny squares together. And it's really cute. I love this pattern. So that's pretty much all you need in order to make this Daisy Granny Square blanket. They're super easy. They're super quick. I love them, honestly. And I'm probably going to be making quite a few for um, babies that are in my family and that are not even born yet, probably. So... I'm super excited about this. I'm glad I'm finally able to get a tutorial up because my throat and everything, you can probably hear it now still, I was not feeling okay. It's just, I work with kids so I literally catch every single thing that they have and it's just terrible and that's why I've been so sick. So, I'm actually gonna be doing, hopefully, a video for an adorable League of Legends portal. Um, coming up, I'm hoping that to come up next week. I've been really bad about posting weekly, but I'm really trying hard that with this new summer job that I'm gonna be working, I'm gonna be the art director for camp, so I'm like super pumped. And I'm hopefully gonna have a lot more time than I've had previously, because I've been working 12 hour days, and hopefully this will only be like eight hour days, so I'll have a lot more time to be working on my actual channel and posting weekly, if not more. I'm hoping to do more, but my requirement now is that I need to post every Sunday. That's what I want. That's what I'm going to do. Call me out on it if I'm not doing it. So, <laughs> all right. If you like this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe to our channel. Be sure to check out our other videos. I'm hopefully going to be posting Poto soon. If you like this video, check out our Granny Squares tutorial, which is going to be linked down in the description and also linked in our end plates. All right. Until next time.